All right, so this is the end product. I have peaches, I have cherries. And um, the reason that my trick is to freeze my fruit is because I can pull this out of the freezer later and turn it into jam or turn it into fruit leather or turn it into any number of other things. If I wait until I can can it, in the middle of us harvesting it, a lot of the fruit goes bad. However, if I just very, very quickly blanch it, cut it up, stick it in little bags, stick it in the freezer, I can pull it out and make it into those other products later. Um, these are our pie cherries. They're really, really good. And I didn't care if they got harvested this year at all. I, I should have cared more, but I didn't care. The girls cared though. So the girls went out and harvested all these cherries. So time is really precious during the harvesting season. If you don't get it in out of the field, if you don't get it off of the tree before it falls onto the ground, it can be contaminated, it could freeze, it could, all sorts of things could be happening, bugs could get into it. And so getting it off the tree is paramount. Getting it into your house, off the tree, into the house is paramount. Once you have it in here, if you've got 20 bushel of fruit in here, and you're only one person, you're always only one person, but say for instance, the only person available is you to get it processed, which is the case for me this year. I have two kids in school, and so this year I'm, ha I'm doing it solo. How am I gonna keep this fruit from going bad? So what I do is I alternate between dehydrating and freezing. Dehydrating, it's in its permanent condition. The other thing that helps is to sort as you go. So these are our little peaches. We have a little white poly um, peach tree. We only have one tree, but we end up with, I don't know, like 10 bushel baskets of peaches out of it. And we eat it fresh when they're really kind of green. The color on these is deceptive. They, they look like they're not ripe because they still have some green on them, but they're a white poly, which means that they're not gonna turn that really orangey, uh, creamy color before they're ripe. They're ripe when they're green still. Once they start to fall, they're actually overripe, so they have to be picked. What I did is I sorted through and I found all the biggest, ripest peaches, did those first. I was still at it for 10 hours, but I saved these green ones and I can do them today and um, I don't need to worry that they overripe. Good. The reason I'm having this conversation with you is because a lot of times when you have a glut of fruit come on, you are a slave to that canner. I prioritize time of year. So for doing beans, for doing meat, winter time is great because I'm, I don't really have a whole lot to do outside. Fruit harvesting season is not the time to be pressure canning meat or pressure canning beans. Harvesting time is time to be dehydrating and freezing as much as you can. And then when you have a little bit of breathing space and you don't have fruit going bad, that's when you get out your hot pack canner, your hot, hot bath canner, and that's when you do that. So hopefully this was helpful. I'm gonna show you my whole process on my little camera phone uh, where I took the footage. Hopefully you enjoy it. This is water that I've already used to blanch. You can see the little bit of peach fuzz at the top. You want your water to boil. And then you only wanna put one batch of peaches in at a time and then pop them out again really fast so they don't overcook. Go. My water's boiling. I'm gonna go ahead and put my peaches in. Okay. And then just as quickly, I'm gonna pop them out. Now, you can put them in ice water if you want them to chill down a little faster, but I don't really care. And it adds a layer of complexity that is an, uh, a block to me just getting the fruit um, processed. So, will it be a little bit over browned? because I'm not putting them directly into ice water. Yes, they definitely will be just a little bit over browned. It doesn't matter. It doesn't make them taste any different. It's just a visual thing. All right, this is what my setup looks like. I have one, two, three, four bowls already blanched. This is my pig container. This is where the skins will go. 
and then this is where my uh, newly pitted fruit will go and this is how I set up my container I have a mason jar with a plastic bag in it and I just put the fruit in there and it holds the bag open and upright for me while I'm filling it And then when I have enough, I bring the jar over and then I quarter the peaches. That seems to be just about the right size. And then I pop it off. And these guys, the pit comes out easier when they're a little riper, but we like the flavor of the peaches when they're a little bit more green. So you kind of have to make that judgment call if it's your fruit. My kids love to just pop a bag of these out of the freezer and eat them with cream in the winter time. So either way, whether I turn these into jam or whether they get eaten frozen, doesn't really matter. And then I wash my hands. I don't like to get the bag sticky. It's not sticky at this point. The bag is not sticky. Nothing juicy has touched the outside of the bag. And I just zip it up, make sure it's really nice and tight. I don't overfill the bag. And that way I can close it without having to touch the fruit. Turn it upside down. Shake it a little bit. And when it comes out, it's kind of vacuum packed a little bit. It's not, there's not a lot of air in there. It's pretty vacuum packed. So I just stick this in the freezer. So Paige transferred a small basket into this bigger basket to bring it up, and that's not what we wanted. I, Paige isn't in trouble, but I just wanted to show this is not a good thing. With these homegrown peaches, they're soft at this point, and you don't want them stacked on top of each other quite that much. But this is what I have left to process from our peaches, our one little peach tree. This is about a third, about a third of all the peaches that we got off of that tree this year. Whenever I'm canning or doing anything, any other kind of food prep. I have some kind of large meal cooking at the same time. This is fried rabbit. And it means that my family is not suffering just because I'm, you know, taking up the whole kitchen. So this is more of it like a snacking type of a day. If we're doing butchering, if we're doing harvesting, I just try to keep food on hand that can be easily eaten, that we don't have to sit down for a meal. So these are fruits that were not good enough for consumption for people. So I have peaches in here for the pigs, I have an old nectarine, some old pears, and then the skins from all those peaches I just processed. The pigs just spit the pits out. If they were baby pigs, I would not give them fruit with pits in it, but the older pigs can either chew the pit to get the seed inside, or they just know to spit them out. So don't worry about it too much. I'm not going to be able to open it. Do your best. Hi, dog. Hi, <laughs> Grant. There's Widow.
make sure it goes in the right spot, right? Here. Yep. So by processing them so that they go into the freezer instead of trying to can them or dehydrate them today, I'm making sure they don't go to waste, but I'm also protecting my own energy.